Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths. More specifically, a basic missile interceptor tutorial, because it's about time I got around to doing that. So what do I mean by missile interceptor? Well, it is a missile that intercepts other projectiles, more specifically uh, missiles and as of a somewhat not too recent but still kind of recent patch, cram shells. And in the kind of um, general meta slash balance of anti-munition systems in front of the depths, these are typically best at medium to long range because, well, it's a missile. And also because the fact they need to steer themselves onto their target, it means they have a bit of an arc to them. It's not instantaneous and hit scan like a lambs, or it's not a high velocity aim thing uh, like a, a Sea Wiz advanced cannon or something like that. And so they're best at medium to long range, and I'm going to demonstrate that right now uh, by flinging an iron cordon uh, at my little fortress here. Don't worry, god mode is on. Uh, safety first. So away our missile interceptors go uh, to intercept uh, these missiles right here, and by gum they actually do a reasonably uh, good job. I say reasonably good job because they're not perfect. I think, yep, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Four of those big missiles got through, so uh, these are not a flawless uh, kind of anti-munition defense, but they are pretty good and like they work best in combination with others, more on that later. And in particular, uh, if you're not dealing with massed volleys of, well, particularly large missiles, they're just really good for like sniping the things out of the air long before they even get near you. They are, unfortunately, kind of stupid <laughs> in that they don't always prioritize their targets very well. So, uh, what can we say about these things? Well, firstly, uh, you don't need to worry about uh, using a... where is it? So, uh, normally with missiles uh, that are self-guided, you need to stick an Identify Friend or Foe add-on on them. Uh, you don't need to do that with these things. Uh, I've never used them with this. Um, these things are smart enough to know what's an enemy projectile or not. And you, you there, there should be a quick note, I should say. You used to be able uh, to make... Oh my goodness, that cram shell hit us in the face. Um, you, it used to be possible, I, and I in fact made a guide on it uh, some time ago, uh, to make large and huge uh, missile interceptors. So, I will show you right now what I'm talking about. So, here we have small interceptors, here we have medium interceptors. Uh, we can try for a large. I wonder how that's going to go. So, one, two, three, four. Ah, I should probably talk first about uh, what the setup uh, for these things are. This is the basic interceptor. It looks like this. Variable thruster, fins, APN guidance, and missile interceptor. The missile interceptor is what inter does the interception. Uh, it steers the... it is what locks onto enemy projectiles and damages them. The APN guidance is just to ensure that the thing actually hits it. If you don't use this, uh, they tend to they tend to over or under shoot. So prediction guidance doesn't work very well and no guidance at all is just a no-no. Fins so the thing can steer and variable thrusters so the thing can, you know, thrust. So uh, four components, which means you need uh, two for a medium missile and just one uh, for a small. Handy, handy indeed. And so even if you have a four-component uh, large missile, you'll notice that the missile interceptor head is not here. And in fact, if you even try to load a saved interceptor, so here I have basic interceptor, uh, I'll load that, and you'll notice that does not work. It instead puts a reinforced body in there. That is a more recent patch. Uh, I don't know what time you, the viewer, are watching this, but uh, when I'm recording this, it's been a few months or a few weeks, I can't tell, time is immaterial, uh, that the devs patched that out, which is, I don't know, I am ambivalent. I have no feelings on that. Some people are upset, some people love it. That is how the world works. And same thing uh, with uh, huge missiles. All right, so we can uh, load in, we can try and load in. Basic intercept, it's not gonna work. No missile interceptor. So, uh, large and huge missiles, you can't make interceptors out of them, which kind of makes sense. 
Like, missile interceptors exist in real life, and they're certainly not as big as ICBMs. But in any case, so... Other things to note uh, with this basic setup. This is not the only setup you can use, but generally this is all you really need. There's not much point putting any kind of warhead on these things. Uh, there's not much point uh, making them super long range or have a super long lifetime, because their job is kind of to destroy other munitions. Uh, explosive warheads do damage um, uh, other projectiles a little bit, and they do push them around a lot. Not really worth it to use them uh, with the missile interceptor, I find, because they push things away, and also it means that instead of um, the missile interceptor doing a little bit of damage and moving on, because they can do that, um, uh, the, you can see one interceptor can actually destroy several um, enemy projectiles in a row, but they can't do that if they explode on contact, which is what the explosive warhead does, so that's no good. And there's a few ways to launch them. Staggered fire is a good idea. It is best to set these things to fire continuous. So if you go to the missile control, you see here's a salvo and a full salvo. You don't want these things to go full salvo because uh, it means that the thing will be busy reloading even if there's got missiles in the racks and then you get blown up and that really hurts and that's no good. Uh, so continuous fire is probably best. A little bit of stagger. Uh, doesn't need to be a huge amount, but uh, you don't want these things launched just in big volleys because uh, if they're all clumped together, uh, they can be destroyed all at once by, well, many things. They can be destroyed by enemy sea whiz, uh, lambs, like enemy interceptors. Like, it is possible to make an anti missile missile. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to make it happen on purpose, but yeah, missile interceptors will. Um, from opposing teams, they will target and destroy each other, so... Like, maybe you don't want to launch them all at once so they're in a nice big cluster all to be uh, fried at once. That's no good. And you can launch these things in any number of ways. So you can use SeaWiz controllers, and that's going to have a whole tutorial all to itself. Uh, you can fire them with local weapon controllers as well, although why you would do that, I don't know. There is a trick to have dumb fire missiles that kind of pull double duty as like unguided uh, rockets to damage the enemy, and also missile interceptors. I've never had much success with that, and we're, this is the basic tutorial, so we're not talking too much about that. The simplest way is just to use uh, ACB, so that's what we're going to be talking about, uh, talking about today. So the ACB setup is pretty straightforward. This one activates if there are missiles within 3,000 meters, and if there is, it'll fire weapons, and in this particular case, it'll fire just this one controller, because the effect range is set to two. There is another way to do this uh, with ACB block naming, so you can go over here, set this all the way over here, go over here, Whee! and search pattern is, say, oh, I don't know, let's just call it uh, Barry. And then I can go over here and I can name this thing Barry. Go back to the ACB. And hallelujah, it's controlling Barry. And it should work just fine. Yep, there we go. So we have uh, we have named our missile controller Barry and it works just fine. And this is a useful way of keeping your ACBs uh, out of the bits um, of your craft where uh, you want to stick your missile controllers and you can use... Uh, all kinds of stuff you can do this for instance so if I can control Barry and put him there and go here and then use a receiver there and a transmitter here is that all working so Barry's control there uh, this is another way of just uh, separating out your control uh, from the actual launch pads because uh, pretend for a second that this thing um, is a uh, not set up the way it is you can set them up like that as well so uh, kind of uh, using interceptors kind of falls into the territory of using ACB wizardry if that's the way you want to go like I said you can use a SeaWiz controller and that is arguably simpler and allows you to control uh, where these things fly a bit more effectively uh, but the main reason uh, I don't do that is because, well, this is simpler, it's just one block. And also, ACB is 20 materials, and the close-in weapon system controller, the Z-Wiz controller, is 50. 
And the all-in-one is 150, so no thank you. I am El Cheapo. Also, you can just spam these. It's reasonably straightforward. Okay, so what else can we talk about? We can talk about the difference between uh, the small and medium uh, version of this, because you only get them in small and medium sizes. Sorry, uh, you want a large uh, side of fries with this? Sorry, we only do small and medium. So small ones, which are the obvious ones, because, well, you can have uh, four of them uh, just in one block, so they are cheaper, they're more compact. Let's actually just double check my math. Are these things cheaper? Uh, small launcher is 800, medium launcher is 600, 600, 200, 200, that's 1000 uh, versus just 800 uh, for the same setup uh, with them. Um, four times, uh, well three times as much volume. So they're nice and compact, they're nice and cheap and you can fire these things uh, really quickly. So there's four in here, each one has a reload time about 10 seconds. So 10 seconds you can get four of these off as compared, uh, compared to one of these, in which the reload time is 14 seconds. So these things here fire much, 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 much more quickly. The problem is they don't do as much damage. Like, really, they don't do as much damage. And you'll notice that they do different levels of damage to small, medium, large, and huge missiles, and different amounts of damage depending on the size of the cram shell they hit. Um, incidentally, if you want anti-cram... Um, uh, missiles, interceptors, you just swap this to that. So, uh, if there are cram shells within blah blah blah, it'll fire weapons, and you can set this up uh, like so. I will show you the prefab for it. Anti cram missiles ACP. Well, there we go. And you can go and stick the. Let's do that. No. Wrong. Everything's wrong. You can stick two of them there, or you can do interesting things with slave action ACBs, which I won't talk about right now, because that requires an ACB tutorial, which I should probably also do. Ugh, life is hard. Anyway, so, small interceptors. Uh, they are cheaper, more compact, faster reload, you can continuously spit them out if you have enough of them, uh, but they don't do nearly as much damage, and particularly to larger missiles. Like, you'll see here, it goes 350, 700, 1050, 1400, uh, as opposed to this, in which they medium missiles do huge amounts of damage to particularly large and huge missiles. They just, they really tear chunks off them, which is great because they have huge amounts of health. Uh, so medium missiles are just generally way more efficient against larger missiles. Um, small, like small interceptors aren't bad at it. You can spam them and they still add up. Like. Uh, this getting launched, uh, this one launch pad is like, what's 1,400 times 4, 4 5,200, uh, which is still not nearly as much as the 10,000 damage that a single medium interceptor does. My goodness, my goodness, that's so much numbers. Uh, also, uh, these are small, these are about as small as small missiles get. Uh, their health is non-existent, so you've got 84 health each. Which means, and I'm going to spawn in the Iron Cordon again so you can see this. Um, no health means that they tend to get uh, fried very easily by enemy anti-munition system. Alright, so we the interceptors, go a-flying. And they go intercepting. And right there you would have seen the lambs uh, systems uh, going away. All right, let's just let this hit this in the face slightly and spray all our stuff around. Zap. See, yep. That's in the blind spot of the Iron Cordon. Uh, but yeah, like, I do tend to find that uh, interceptors do tend to get close to enemy craft if they're firing at um, specific things that are coming from them. And you see like that, like, this overlap uh, where... Uh, enemy missiles are within range of enemy anti-munition systems. Um, they can zap your interceptors, and small interceptors... I think this might be... I can't really tell. Is that a... I can't really tell. Is that a big one, or a medium one, or a small one? I can't really see. Scale is weird. Uh, but this... Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> the small ones just really don't have any health, and they can be taken out 
uh, really easily and really quickly. Also, they are scatterbrained and they don't freaking go for the thing that's closest. Which is tremendously irritating. But it's never a waste because damaged munitions uh, do less damage to you, which is very convenient. So let's talk about medium a little bit. So pros is, well, way more damage per cost. It's uh, They're much more efficient against larger missiles. But they have a slower reload and they have a higher material cost. And they take up more volume. So they kind of are... I'd say they broadly, they're broadly they pretty much even in their overall usefulness. Um, to the point where it's a good idea to have a mix of both of them. Because, well, if you've got a swarm of medium or small missiles coming in, just the small launchers can uh, keep up the rate of fire and pop them uh, pretty easily. And then for the odd large or huge missile that gets thrown at you, the medium uh, interceptors can destroy them. Which is very helpful. So, how do you set this up? Like, and by setup I mean how do you orientate them? What works really well? In this particular case, we've got a... Uh, what do we go? What's the word I'm looking for? We've got a horizontal setup. So the missiles are... Uh, the length of them is parallel to the water slash ground slash meter. Uh, so they fire, you know, along the surface of the planet. Which works fine for anything coming in like at a shallow angle like this. And means that uh, orientated this way it works better against cram shells I find. Because crams uh, tend to move at like... How fast do they move again? Like 300 meters per second. Which is faster than most missiles. And they zoom in and this can pop them fairly easily. Uh, the problem with this is that if anything is coming at you for, like directly from above or below. Depending on whether you stick this on a flying thing or not. Um, if you're mounting your interceptor systems like this, like flat, um, they have to do a big arc in order to come around and destroy stuff uh, that's coming at you from a steep angle. So, uh, and the opposite is true uh, for vertically launched systems. So if we go like this, for instance, and I just do this, very simple. Uh, this setup is a lot better against anything that's kind of arcing down on you because these things don't have to steer very hard in order to uh, zap something coming from above. Or if you're aiming them down, coming from below. And so, again, it's like if you're going to have interceptor systems, have some pointing sideways and have some pointing up. And, hell, you might even put some uh, forwards and backwards. Or mount them on a continuously rotating uh, sub-object, like a turret or a spin lock. Or have them controlled uh, by a SeaWiz uh, controller on a turret. And I say again, more on that uh, another time. So, um, there is uh, one more thing to mention uh, with, tor with missile interceptors. And that is uh, torpedo interceptors uh, come under the same uh, banner. I'm not sure if you noticed, but underneath here, we've had a torpedo interceptor uh, set up the whole time. And it works Pretty much exactly the same way, so I'm going to, well, I'm going to demonstrate this against a whole bunch of torpedoes now. Uh, so activate when there are torpedoes within blah blah blah, and it will fire weapons, and this thing is right next to the missile controller, which is controlling all these uh, uh, torpedo interceptors. Got a little uh, stack of fire there, and uh, this is exactly the same. Uh, in times gone by, I have thought like, oh, these need to be at least uh, two blocks wide to do their job. As it turns out, if a missile is quite small, an APN guidance block actually compensates for the lack of a ballast tank, which you'd normally want to use on any kind of uh, underwater missile slash torpedo in order to compensate for the fact that these damn things float. So, and the siren in the background is, you know, freaking out about uh, floaty missiles. So we're going to spawn in a little submarine of mine that has uh, torpedoes and nothing else. So let's go ships. No, that's wrong. Submarines. There we go. Axolotl. And spawn it in there. And you are godly. So hopefully this works. So we see here these things don't have ballast tanks. Uh, but they can... Wow, they move really quickly as well. And they go wee, zap, 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 zap. And they can deal with incoming torpedoes uh, quite nicely. And same thing applies uh, to torpedo interceptors. Like, you can stick them on turrets, and you can... 
uh, do wacky things uh, with sub-objects with them. And um, it really helps to have a mixture of small and medium ones because... Let's have a look. What did I stick in here again? So these are actually, well, they're long, but they are small uh, torpedoes. Which means that this particular interceptor uh, system, which is all small torpedoes as well, works just fine. But the split second you get bigger torpedoes uh, being flung at you, it uh, kind of helps to have something a little bit more hefty. Um, and particularly if you're up against things like the Bulwark or the Stronghold or just a whole bunch of Goldie Crot, which just spam large torpedoes like no one's business, uh, having bigger torpedo interceptors can absolutely save your bacon. I forgot how adorable and silly this thing is. It's very adorable and silly. And yeah, and last but not least, uh, regarding... Uh, I'm gonna delete that and spawn in the Iron Cord again because it's... Actually, let's try the Palisade. We're really not gonna... We're not going to do very well um, against the Palisade, because the Palisade spawns way too many large missiles. Uh, but... Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's fun. Uh, but... Uh, it really does help uh, with missile interceptors to supplement them with other forms of anti-munition defense, because I'm finding more and more that none of them really work uh, perfectly on their own. And it's just a good idea to... Oh my goodness, are we actually going to fry this entire volley? We're not going to fry this entire volley. That would be very silly. We fried almost the whole volley. Jeez, that's a lot of damage prevented. And my poor fortress is made of wood now. How did that happen? So yeah, like, it's a good idea to mix them with lambs, which I have done a tutorial on. And sea whiz, And just... And... What else is there? Like decoys, both missile-based and just block-based uh, decoys to fool missiles and all stuff, or even shields. Um, because these things can't do anything against advanced cannons, and I don't think they ever will be, because how would that even work? So yeah, that's basically missile interceptors. Um, their main advantage is that they're, they're great at medium to long range, and they do a lot of damage to things that otherwise would take a lot of... Oh, dearie me. <laughs> that missile got stuck on me munition warner. Yeah, remember to give your missiles clearance, folks. So yeah, that's missile interceptors. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it, and it was helpful. So on that merry note, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths for more defensive shenanigans involving missiles probably. Farewell.